Hey, what's up everyone? It's Chris Featherstone. Today I wanted to talk about face cancellation and what it is. I want to apply the theory to a real world example. We're going to also talk about monocompatibility. And the last part of this video is going to cover the phase invert option on your DAW and why that might not necessarily be correcting for phase issues that you may be encountering. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what I wanted to do is look at a recorded waveform, and what you're looking at here is a zoomed in version of a vocal waveform that I recorded. And you can see that it's all over the place, and it's got a lot of peaks and valleys, um, and it's not a very simple waveform to look at. And so what I want to do to demonstrate what phase cancellation is and how to avoid it is just go to a very simple waveform to start off with, and then we'll get into our examples later. All right, so a simple waveform to look at is going to be a sine wave. And so a sine wave, by definition, is a signal of periodic oscillation in constant amplitude. And you can see on the waveform here, I've drawn in what the amplitude would be. It's basically the height from top to bottom. And we've got the period of the waveform as well. And so this is a very simplistic waveform, and we're going to dive into some of the details of a sine wave. But just to start off with, we're just going to look at it from a very simplistic point of view. All right, so what we're looking at here is a poorly mic'd stereo recording. And you can see that we have our left and our right channel. And if we were to look at the amplitudes at any point in time, and let's say we assign some values to them, for example, plus one to the left channel and minus one to the right channel, and we were to sum those together, you would get zero. And this is what happens when you convert a stereo track into a mono track. You're folding the left and the right channels together into the center, and they are additive. So plus one minus one equals zero. So you might be asking yourself, well, why do I care? I listen to my radio in my car, that's in stereo, and even my new cell phone, it has stereo speakers on it, so why care about mono, right? Well, there's several reasons why you'd want to mix in mono, and one of the biggest reasons is to check for mono compatibility, and this is especially important if you wanted to get your song played on the radio. What happens when they play your song on the radio is they're going to take a stereo signal or your stereo track, and they're going to convert it to mono, and the reason they do that is to save bandwidth so that they only have to have one pilot frequency that transmits your song over the radio. And so you can see in the diagram here that I drew, you have your radio station with its tower, and it's going to transmit your song over the airwaves. And on the reception end, it could be your car stereo, it could be your cell phone, or anything like that. And what's going to happen on the reception end is the receiver is going to basically take that mono signal that was transmitted, and it's going to deconstruct it into a stereo signal. And so in the end, you are listening to it in stereo, but when it's transmitted over the airwaves, it's a mono signal, and you need to make sure that you are mono compatible. All right, so what you're looking at here is an FM transmitter circuit, and this is just the block diagram of the circuit. If we would go ahead and take a look at our stereo recording, and we were to look at the previous assigned values of plus one for the left channel, and then minus one for the right channel, and we fed them into the circuit, let's go ahead and see what happens. So we end up with plus one coming into the summing node right here. And from the right hand side, we end up having minus one coming up this leg, getting fed into the same summing node. So the result is going to be plus one minus one equals zero on the output. And the same thing is going to happen on the other side. You have the left channel that has plus one coming down this leg, getting fed into the summing node here. And then you have minus one coming in from the right getting pushed into the same summing node, so you end up with plus one minus one equals zero. Zero times anything is zero, and then zero plus zero from this side is going to result in a mono signal of nothing. And so this is the biggest reason that you actually want to make sure that your song is mono compatible. All right, if we go ahead and we take a look at the sine wave inside of Logic, um, you can see that I have two of them. One of them I called left channel, and the other one I called right channel. And you can see that they're both mono signals in the center, and the only reason that I named them the way that I did was because I intend to pan this one all the way to the left, and this one all the way to the right. And that's just the naming convention to keep things straight. 
All right, so if we went ahead and we looked at the sine wave, at any point in time, you can see that the left channel has a positive amplitude right here, where the right channel has a negative amplitude. And so the theory tells us that these two signals would cancel each other out if we played them together. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So you can see that I'm playing, and I do have an audio signal coming on each of these channels here. And you hear nothing, and that's because the theory is holding up. And so we're getting perfect phase cancellation in this scenario. A common thing for most people to do when they're mixing a song is to take certain instruments and spread them across a stereo field. This allows for more openness in the song so we can distinguish um, the instruments and the different parts better. But as human beings, we hear in stereo anyways, so it's a better representation of how we would actually hear a song. And so if we were to take a look at this signal and we were to pan it all the way to the left, and we were to look at this signal and pan it all the way to the right, let's go ahead and see what we get as the result. Okay, so you could see that if we were to pan these two signals across the stereo field, we're no longer perfectly canceling anymore. However, there's a slight problem here. We're faced again with when we want to play our song on the radio, and we're not monocompatible anymore. The way to check for monocompatibility is if we go to our stereo output, we can add a gain plugin provided inside of Logic, and you can see that we have a mono button here. And what this is going to do is it's going to sum the left and the right channels together. And so we've panned one signal all the way to the left and one all the way to the right, and we're going to go through what we had looked at in the theory, and we're going to sum those two together and see the result. Let's go ahead and play it. All right, so you can see that when I turn on the mono button here, it sums those two signals together, and again, we're getting cancellation, so we are not mono-compatible. Now you could probably see why it wasn't a very good idea to start panning our signals to the left and the right right off the bat in our mix, because we may not catch any phasing issues that are happening between our signals. And so if you keep everything in the center to begin with, you can actually start eliminating that question in your mind whether or not you do have phase problems, and then you can move forward afterwards to start spreading your signals across the stereo field. So I'm going to go ahead and bring these signals back into the center. Let's take a look at another approach that you might be able to take in order to correct for some of these cancellation issues. If we were to add the gain plugin to either the left or the right channel, then you can see if we open it, we have a phase invert option here. And what that's going to do is basically multiply everything by negative 1 on that signal, and the peaks are going to line up and the dips are now going to line up, so they should theoretically not cancel anymore. Let's go ahead and see how that sounds. So we have cancellation, and now we're going to phase invert. All right, so it seems that we may have fixed the cancellation issue between these two signals now. But the real question is, are we going to be monocompatible now that we've added a phase invert to one of these signals and we pan back to the left and the right again? Let's go ahead and try it. I'm going to pan this all the way to the left and this signal back all the way to the right, and let's go ahead and play it. And we're going to check for monocompatibility again on the stereo output with the gain plugin by using the mono button here. And indeed, you can see that we are now mono-compatible, and we've corrected for the issue. All right, let's take a look at our real-world example here. What you're looking at is an electric guitar amp, and what we're going to do is record it with two different microphones placed in two different positions. And so we have one pressed right up against the guitar cabinet, and that's going to add a lot of presence to the guitar recording. And then we have one pulled further back, and what this one is going to do is sound a little bit more distant, and it's going to capture more of that room ambience, and it might sound more to what your ear would hear if you were sitting in the room listening to it. 
So if we have a recording setup like this, we're going to have phase problems. Let me go ahead and explain why. All right, so what I've done is I've overlaid the sine wave onto our recording setup. If we treat the amplifier as the origin of the sound, which it is, and we place the origin of the x and y axes at the amplifier, so x equals 0 and y equals 0 here, and we treat the x axes as time, and then the y axis is going to be our amplitude of our signal coming out, we can look at how the signal is going to come out of the amplifier. So basically we have the sine wave, and you can see here that it's going to travel through the air, and it's going to hit this microphone at a later time than the first microphone. So basically, when the trough of the sine wave hits the second microphone, the first microphone is seeing a peak. And so if we were recording these simultaneously and we played it back, we have the possibility for getting the phase cancellation. And I'll show that in an example here soon. And so if I went ahead and I played this out of the cabinet, you can see that at any point in time, the second microphone is going to see an equal and opposite value that the first microphone is seeing. And so no matter what you do, you have phase cancellation here. Let's take a look at the different components of a sine wave. A sine wave in its most basic definition is going to oscillate around zero. If this horizontal line was to represent zero, anything above it is going to be positive, and anything below it is negative. And in our example, we had a peak amplitude of plus one. The peak amplitude is a measurement from zero to its peak value or zero to its peak value. And so if you remember, we had plus one and minus one. The peak to peak value is a measurement from one peak to another. So in our example, we would have a value of two. In the formula above, we have a, which is gonna be our peak value. So that would be one, and it's being multiplied by the sine function. The sine function has three variables in it f, t, and the Greek symbol phi. f is going to be our frequency, which is a measurement in hertz, and t is going to be time, and then the Greek symbol phi is our phase. In this tutorial, what we're concerned with is the amplitude a and the Greek symbol phi. Let's go ahead and take a further look at how the Greek symbol phi is going to affect the sine wave. All right, so here we are in Grapher, and yet again I've plotted the sine wave. And in addition to that, I've plotted three positions. So position number one is pi over two, position number two is pi, and position three is three pi over two. And if we can imagine our amplifier being at position zero, zero, where the source of our sound is coming from, and we had our microphones recording that signal, well, if both microphones are placed the same distance away from the amplifier, then they're going to see at any time the same point of the signal. And so if we were to move mic number two away from mic number one, then you can see at any given point in time, mic number one will see a different point of the signal than mic number two will. And if we go over to position number three, which is three pi over two, you can see that this is what we were showing previously, where mic number one is seeing a peak at pi over two, and mic number two is seeing a trough at position three pi over two. And if we do the math, we'll see that the phase difference between the two microphones is gonna end up being pi. And pi in degrees is 180 degrees. So we have 180 degrees phase shift between the recordings of mic number one to mic number two. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the real world example where we actually have a recorded guitar sound. So um, I have two microphones here again, and the top one is gonna be mic number two, the one that was furthest away from the amp, and mic number one was the microphone closest to the amp. And so let's go ahead and play this and see how it sounds. All right, so you could kind of tell that it sounds a little tinny, it doesn't sound very full, however you want to describe it. 
to my ear, it just doesn't sound quite right. And so let's go ahead and look at one way we might be able to actually fix the sound a little bit, make it sound a little bit better. So we have our mic number one here. And if you remember, I talked about the gain plugin earlier. We could place this gain plugin on either track. I'm choosing mic number one here. And if you remember, the gain plugin has a phase invert button. And let's go ahead and take a listen to how this sounds again when I have phase invert off and then when I put phase invert on. Okay, so that made it sound a little bit more full and maybe not as tinny, but you can kind of hear that there's a little bit of like a flange type sound going on to it. Um, and so phase inversion is not really correcting fully for this issue. Okay, so I've zoomed in really far into these waveforms and you can see that we have mic number two on top and mic number one on bottom. Mic number two, again, was furthest away from the amplifier, where mic number one was closer to it. And you can see that the two waveforms, if you compare them carefully, you'll notice that they don't look identical. And the reason for that is because both microphones, they're different, and they have different frequency responses. And therefore, we cannot achieve perfect phase cancellation like we did in our sine wave example. However, you will still have some level of phase cancellation, even with two different microphones. And so if we take a look at the position of these two waveforms, you can see that mic number two, the one that was furthest away from the amplifier, is seeing the same signal as mic number one, but at a later time. And you can see that if you carefully look at these two peaks here and these two peaks here. So all you have to do is simply line those two points up. So I'm going to put the cursor around that peak, and then I'm going to do my best to line up the other waveform. And if you want, you can really zoom in far. And try to nail the peaks on top of each other. Okay, so that looks pretty good. may not be perfect, but it's going to be a lot less um, of a phase issue than we've had before. So let's go ahead and back out of all this and take another listen. So to me, that sounds a lot more natural and a lot more full. So if you know how to correctly fix for a phase issue in your song, then you can start to break the rules a little bit and add some phase difference between two signals if that's the effect that you want to go for. So again, it's not a matter of simply adding this gain plugin to one of the tracks and using what they're calling the phase invert button. This is not really correcting for a phase difference between two signals. This is just simply multiplying the entire signal by minus one, or the amplitude by minus one, and flipping the polarities around zero. And you can prove that to yourself by actually putting the phase invert on and bouncing this track out and inserting the bounce track below and zooming in and comparing how that signal was affected. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here we are with our two tracks. The top one is the original one for mic one, and the bottom one is mic one again with the phase invert option on the gain plugin activated. And you can see that when we re-import it, all that plugin is doing is multiplying the signal by minus one, or the amplitude by minus one. And so if you look at any point in time, the peaks become troughs and the troughs become peaks. Again, right there. And so multiplying by minus one and fixing 180 degrees phase shift between two signals is not the same thing. 
And so as long as you understand that, you can correctly f fix your phase delay issues that you have between two signals. All right, so I hope this video helped you out and you have a better understanding of what phase cancellation is and how to correct for it if you're experiencing it in one of your songs. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.